Cochrane Library is a valuable source of information on the effects of vaccines and various aspects of vaccination procedures. Our Cochrane Review summarises the evidence on the effects of using needles of different sizes to vaccinate children and adolescents. In our review we looked at both the length and the gauge of needles. The length of the needle is measured in millimetres from the hub of the needle to the tip of the needle. The needle gauge refers to the size of the hole in the needle through which the vaccine is injected. The higher the gauge number, the narrower the needle. So for example, a 23 gauge needle is 0.6 millimetres in diameter, but a 25 gauge needle is slightly narrower and has a diameter of 0.5 millimetres. The hubs of needles are often colour coded to indicate the gauge of the needle. For example, the hub of a 25 gauge needle is orange in colour and the hub of a 23 gauge needle is blue. In our review, we wanted to discover if the length and the gauge of needles used to vaccinate children and adolescents has an influence on the immune response to the injected vaccine, the pain experienced during the vaccination procedure, and finally the occurrence of other adverse events that can occur following vaccination, including fever and local reactions such as swelling, tenderness and redness at the site where the vaccine is injected. We found five studies that were relevant to our review questions. We rated the quality of the evidence from these studies using four levels. High, moderate, low or very low. High quality evidence means that we are very confident in the results. Very low quality evidence means that we are very uncertain about the results. Overall, there were problems with the design of some of the studies and there was not enough data to answer some parts of our review questions. The quality of evidence from two of the studies was too low to allow us to draw any conclusions about the effects of the needles that were compared in the studies. However, there was sufficient evidence from the remaining three studies to allow us to reach some conclusions. These three studies involved a total of 1,135 healthy infants who were vaccinated with needles of different sizes. Most of the infants were aged between two and six months. In all of the studies, the infants were vaccinated in the thigh using the same injection technique. The skin at the injection site was stretched flat. The needle was then inserted at a 90 degree angle and pushed down fully into the muscle of the thigh before injecting the vaccine. The vaccines that were injected were combination vaccines designed to protect against several diseases, including diphtheria, tetanus and pertussis or whooping cough. The vaccines all contained what are known as whole cell pertussis antigens. Combination vaccines with whole cell pertussis components are commonly used in many developing countries. However, they are not commonly used in developed countries. The findings from these three studies are therefore most relevant to developing countries. When we were reviewing the evidence from these studies, we first of all looked to see if there were any differences between using long 25mm needles and short 16mm needles for the vaccination procedure. We found that the long and the short needles probably produce a similar immune response to the injected vaccine. This finding is based on moderate quality evidence from one study. We found that use of the 25mm needle probably reduces the occurrence of local reactions. So infants who are vaccinated with a 25mm needle probably get less redness, swelling and tenderness at the injection site than infants who are vaccinated with the shorter 16mm needle. This finding is also based on moderate quality evidence. None of the studies included in our review looked to see if there was any difference between the long and the short needles in terms of the pain experienced during the vaccination procedure. Finally, it is uncertain if the long and the short needles differ in terms of their effects on crying, fever and other adverse events that sometimes occur after vaccination, including drowsiness, loss of appetite and vomiting. The reason why we are uncertain is because the quality of the evidence from the studies for these outcomes is very low. We also looked to see if there were any differences between using the narrow 25 gauge 25 mm needle and the wider 23 gauge 25 mm needle for the vaccination procedure. We found that the narrow and the wide gauge needles probably produce a similar immune response to the injected vaccine. This finding is based on moderate quality evidence from one study. We found that use of the narrow gauge needle may reduce the occurrence of local reactions compared to the wider gauge needle. 
However, this finding is based on low quality evidence, so there is some uncertainty around this result. We found that use of the wide gauge needle may slightly reduce the pain of the vaccination procedure compared to the narrow gauge needle. We think that the slight difference in pain between the wide and the narrow gauge needles is too small to be of any practical importance. Also, this finding is based on low quality evidence, so there is some uncertainty around this result. Use of the wider gauge needle probably results in a slight reduction in the duration of crying immediately following vaccination compared to the narrow gauge needle. This finding is based on moderate quality evidence. We think that the slight difference in crying time between the wide and narrow gauge needles is too small to be of any practical importance. Finally, because the quality of the evidence is very low, we are uncertain if the wide and the narrow gauge needles differ in terms of their effects on fever and other adverse events that can sometimes occur after vaccination, including drowsiness, loss of appetite and vomiting. If you're interested in additional information, you can access the full text of this review in the Cochrane Library at www.cochranelibrary.com. <laughs>